So in this project, we're going to automate a pretty common task. Now, the task we're going to focus on is building the shear force and bending moment diagram for a simply supported beam. So whether you're an engineer or a student engineer, you're going to find yourself building these shear force and bending moment diagrams a lot. And you'll even find yourself doing it quite a lot for simply supported beams. So on the Degree Tutors website here, on my website, you can see there's a tutorial here all about how uh, you actually go ahead, what's the theory behind building these diagrams and how you do it. Uh, and obviously there's a there's a course as well if you want to take a, a deeper dive into exactly how it's done. But uh, provided you understand how to do it, you understand how to calculate a shear force and bending moment diagram, you don't have to do too many of them before you start asking yourself, how can I speed this up? Because it's a painfully slow process once you actually know what you're doing. So we're going to scroll down here um, to the bottom of this uh, tutorial article and uh, we're going to look at this guy. So I worked through the solution of calculating the shear force and bending moment diagram for this beam in this video here and, and we sort of talk about how you do it here and the end result if I keep going down the end result is this guy here, the shear force and bending moment diagram. So our objective now is to write some Python code that is going to allow us to evaluate that shear and moment diagram or determine the shear and moment diagram um, for this beam. But the beauty of writing some code to do it is that we're going to be able to, you know, change all the input parameters, have multiple point loads, multiple moments applied, distributed loads, and the code will take care of it all. It will build the shear force and bending moment diagram for us. So if I jump over to the completed notebook that we're going to end up with at the end of this project, um, I'll demonstrate. Uh, I'll demonstrate the process very quickly. So here's our notebook on the right hand side here. So we've got some input parameters first. So what we want to do is specify the span of our structure. The span of that beam on the left is 17 meters. We want to specify the distance into the left support. That's A here. So that's going to be three meters. And then the distance to the right support is going to be B. And we're going to be able to specify, well, we're obviously going to be able to change all these different parameters. Then we're going to define a series of point loads. For this case, we've only got one point load. It's located at six meters its horizontal component is zero and its vertical component is minus 90. Uh, we've got a point moment applied at 17 meters that's the moment over on the right hand side here so we're specifying the location and magnitude positive moment here is is a, is a positive number our clockwise moment is a positive number and then we've got our linear loads so a linear load our code is going to be able to handle uniformly distributed loads and what we're calling here linear loads are loads with a linearly varying intensity and so we're specifying the starting location and the end location and then the magnitude at the start and the magnitude at the end so just by specifying these six different inputs, we can run our code and it will handle all the computation and uh, spit us out a shear force and bending moment diagram. So let's try that. Excellent. So here we are. We've got uh, our reactions calculated first. So we've got a 67 for the reaction at A and that agrees with our solution over on the left hand side here. I just increase that a little bit. So we got our 67 as a reaction for A and 68 for our reaction at B and that's what our code is giving us as well. Now in this particular project we're going to use Plotly. Plotly is a different library that you can use. Python, well it's used in a number of different languages I think but um, obviously you can use it in Python as well. But it gives us a lot of additional nice little functionality that matplotlib, the other main plotting library that we typically use uh, for degree tutors projects and courses, it gives us more than that. And in particular, the reason I like it is because for no extra code, it gives us the ability to mouse over our shear force diagram or whatever we're plotting, and it'll actually tell us what the value is. Uh, and so that's a really nice addition. So we're going to be using Plotly in this particular project. And so if you've done a lot of um, projects or courses uh, with me in degree tutors, uh, this will be a nice change for you to see how to do something different. So anyway, there's our shear force diagram generated for us. And of course, there's our bending moment diagram. And if we look for the peak, the peak bending moment, we're down at uh, 20, well, 201 essentially, uh, which is in agreement with our left hand side, our, our manual hand calculation on the left hand side. So of course the beauty of this is that once the code is written we can come back up to the top here and we can specify any number. We can just add in a new row in here and uh, let me see we could add, well, I won't do it now, but we could add in a new row and any number of new rows and specify a whole range of additional point loads 
additional moments, etc., etc., and just hit run again, and then it's going to give us our shear force and bending moment diagram at the bottom. So over the course of this project, we're going to work through the code that's in behind all of these different steps. I've got I've got it sort of hidden at the minute, but we're going to work out all of the different code um, and basically build this notebook. So that's the plan. Uh, a couple of limitations I should really point out. The first one is. All we're really doing is coding up the tree equilibrium equation. So the sum of the forces in the x and y direction and the sum of the moments. So we're not doing anything more complicated than we do by hand on paper for a statically determinate beam. And so our code is only going to be able to handle a statically determinate beam. Now, we're going to have it such that our code can handle an overhang on the right and or an overhang on the left, or indeed no overhang at all on either side. But we're still only we're still only analyzing simply supported beams. We're just making life a bit easier for us. The next step above this would be to analyze statically indeterminate structures. And if you want to do that in code, well, then the obvious approach or the way to do that is to use a stiffness method, uh, stiffness method approach. Now, of course, I've got a big course on this um, over on degree tutors, and you can go over there and have a look and um, enroll in that course where I'll work all the way through building up that uh, finite element code. Um, but that's just to sort of to highlight the limitations of this. This is a kind of a mini project, fun little tool. We'll end up at the end with something that's very handy, very useful. But if you want the bigger, beefier code that's going to handle statically indeterminate beams and frames, um, well, then you'll want to jump over to Degree Tutors and, and, and have a look at that course. Uh, what's the other thing we should say about this? Um, we're going to make extensive use of the principle of superposition. So I'll just flag that up at the start. Now, this is a very handy little principle, which basically, basically says, if I have two loads on a structure, I can determine the combined influence of both of those loads acting simultaneously by summing up the influence of each of the loads acting independently. And you'll see once we get into writing the code on this, that we're going to be using that principle extensively uh, to generate our shear forces and our bending moments. All right, so that's pretty much an introduction and overview of what we're going to achieve. We'll write our code uh, essentially piece by piece, taking into account the influence of point loads, then point moments, and then and uniformly distributed loads. And then finally, we'll take into account um, the linearly varying loads. Uh, so all we need to do now is actually head over to a fresh Jupyter notebook and actually start uh, writing up some code. So what I should also say is if you are not familiar with Jupyter notebooks, do not let that stop you. If you're not familiar with Python, don't let that stop you either. Um, it's going to be very easy for you to get set up and running on your own machine with a du with a Jupyter notebook, and in fact, I even have I even have a lecture already on that. So if you're over on the Degree Tutors website, let me just make this maximum again, and let me see if I go to courses, and if we come down to this is the course I was telling you about a second ago about the uh, stiffness method. But if you go to this course, which is the direct stiffness method for truss analysis, so head on in here, and scroll on down to this lecture, Getting Started with Jupyter Notebooks. So that's set as a preview lecture. So you can click on that and watch through the process of downloading the Jupyter Notebook development environment, getting yourself set up. Uh, and I think I even do a little bit of an overview of some basic Python in there. It's only 12 minutes long, but that's all you need to then come back to this series and start working your way through this and building up your own, um, your own code. All right, so let's just jump over to a Jupyter Notebook now and uh, get going. All right, so here we are over in a uh, fresh Jupyter notebook. So the first thing that I'm doing here is importing some dependencies, right? So I'm importing a math library, I'm importing NumPy, and I'm also importing matplotlib. I actually, I don't need that. I imported that originally because I originally built this notebook with matplotlib, and then I came across Plotly and I redid it for Plotly. So we don't actually need matplotlib. So let's uh, shift enter and get ourselves a new cell. So now what we're going to do is, let me see, let's set up our, mm, let's set up our parameters. So we'll just give ourselves a little uh, heading here and we'll just say input span and force data below. All right, so we're going to want, uh, let me see, the span. We're going to define a span for us. Let's just set that equal to 17. Let's set A. Remember, A is distance from, from the left side of the beam 
into the first support. So for us, in our example here, A was going to be equal to 3. Now, if there was no overhang on the left, we'd set A equal to 0. And we can set B equal to 13. So that was the distance into the right-hand support. And if there was no overhang on the right-hand side, we would just set B equal to 17, the same as the span. All right, and the next thing that we have to do is define our force data, right? So we'll just say force data. And what we want to say here is we're defining point loads and we're saying that's going to equal to a numpy array. So this is how we're always going to define our loads. It's going to be a two-dimensional array where every row is going to be a new point load. Uh, and within each row, you're defining the data for that specific point load. So for our first row here, we'll say that the point load is located at six meters in from the left-hand side. Its horizontal component is zero and its vertical component is going to be minus 90. So um, because the force acts downwards, we're indicating it with a negative. So negative forces act downwards according to our um, assign convention here. All right, let's just add in a couple of uh, a couple of notes here. All right, so that's our basic data input. Now, I'm going to want to set my code up in such a way that it runs regardless and it works regardless of whether or not I have defined any point loads. Because it could be that I'm doing an analysis where I only have distributed loads or I only have point moments. I don't have any point loads. And because I don't want my code to break if there's no point loads in the uh, particular analysis I'm doing, I'm going to define a default value. Uh, let me see if I go alt enter um, I will get a cell here and here I'm going to define some default values for in this case just point loads point loads is going to just be the empty version of the array okay and all this is doing is it's it's, it's setting up um, a default value of point loads so that if I don't define any down here well I've already defined an empty array up here in the event that I do have point loads well that's fine all I do is down here all I'm doing is overriding what I've already written up here. I'll just say for the benefit of myself, when I come back to this months later and don't remember, I'll say don't or do not edit. This is all I'm doing here is initializing containers. We'll override below where required. All right, and then it's going to be helpful for us to just write a note to say what the different numbers are. So you define your point forces by defining a location first, then an X magnitude, and then a Y magnitude. Okay, great. So let's execute that guy, and then we can execute this guy down here. All right, so now we're gonna to wanna to set up a few defaults. Okay, so again, these are defaults and initializations. We're gonna write this once, and then we're not gonna to have to come back to it. All right, so the first thing is, we're going to write our code in such a way that we're gonna step along our beam in a for loop, and we're going to evaluate the bending moment and shear force at each location. Now, in order for us to do that, we have to have a series of X coordinates along the length of our beam. And so we need to break up the span of our beam into a number of different segments of, of, of equal length. And so what I'm gonna define now is, as divs here, this is going to be a number of divisions to divide my beam up into. Now you can make this as as large as you like. Obviously the larger it is, the longer your code takes to run. So this is just going to be, I'm going to have a note here that just says divide the span up into this number of data points. All right, now that means that each one of the data points we'll call delta is going to be span over divs. And now we can actually generate all of our X coordinates. So we'll define it as a capital X and we'll say that's going to be np.a range, just a function that's coming out of the NumPy library. And we're going to define we're going to define the end of the range of numbers, and that's going to be span plus delta. And then we're going to define the uh, the step, if you like, delta. All right, that's going to give us a range of X coordinates. And now what I'd like to do is I'd like to have a test further down or I want to have a parameter or a flag that allows me to test further down in my code whether or not I have point loads to take into account. So in order for me to do that, it's a bit of a janky way of doing it. You can probably come up with a, a more elegant way of doing this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say NPL is going to be is going to be point loads are the length of point loads and the zero here is saying that it's going to test for the length of the first row within point loads now if that comes back to anything greater than zero i know that i have point loads to take into account so let's actually just see what it comes back as if i if i print npl it's coming back as three okay because there are three numbers right the length of this array here is three is three numbers so later on in the code i can go and do a test and i can say well if npl is greater than zero 
that means I'm going to have point loads to take into account because if I don't have any point loads, let's say that never got defined and the only code that got ran was that one up there. Well then, NPL would be zero. And if that comes back later on in my test, well then I know, ah, okay, I have no point loads. I don't need to take into account the, the code that calculates the shear and moment for point loads. All right, so that's that taken into account. Let's just give ourselves a note. So we're just gonna say test for point loads to consider. All right, where to next? So we want to define a bucket that is going to hold our reactions. So we're gonna say that's gonna be NP array and there's going to be a vertical reaction at A and B and potentially a horizontal reaction at A because that's gonna be a pin support, right? So we're going to say, it's gonna be NP array. Now I want this array to default to being an array full of floats. And so I'm going to put, instead of just zero, I'm gonna put zero point, okay, zero. So that's basically, means I'm going to get a, an array full of float numbers, which is decimal point numbers, instead of an array of integers, and the rest can just be zeros. So I'm just initializing a bucket to hold my reactions. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take into account, or we're going to calculate the reactions that arise from each of our point loads, each of our applied moments, each of our applied UDLs, and through the process or the principle of superposition, we're just going to keep layering those on and adding those on to ultimately end up with the final set of reactions that takes into account all of the applied loads. So that's for reactions and it's essentially the same principle for our shear force. We'll calculate a shear force for every location along our beam for every single point load that got applied. Uh, we'll, we'll calculate the shear and moment that is induced by every single point load, every single moment, every single distributed load, and then we'll just add them all up at the end, again, through the principle of superposition, and that will give us our shear force. So that's gonna be our strategy in this code. So again, we'll just say, this time we're gonna define an empty array an empty array and let me see, it's gonna have dimensions zero and uh, let me see, how many columns? Well, it's gonna need a value or a slot for every single value of X and so we can just put in len of X here. So that's basically setting up um, a, an array, 2D array where every row we're going to write in a set of shear force values for every X location, but every row is gonna correspond with a different point load or a different moment or a different UDL. And then we're just gonna sum up across all of our rows to get the final shear force. All right, and then we're gonna have the, let me see, that should be bending moment. And again, it's the exact same, it's the exact same on the right hand side. So we'll just put in a couple of notes here. So that's it for this one. We have all of our initializations set up. We're gonna come back in the next video and write the code that takes into account or calculates the reaction from point loads. So I'll see you in the next one.